Hi, this is Taxi's Chronicles and I'm your host, Simon Rushton. Today I picked up a number of people, but there's one person who's really shined, or you could say shined, above the, the rest. He had a very interesting story. Um, this, I'll try and keep this brief, but I pulled up and he was standing in the location like many customers where it was really inconvenient to pick him up double red line bus line bus lane and all that kind of thing anyway he kindly was happy to walk about 80 meters down the road to where i was to save me getting a ticket but why i'm telling you this is because when he got in the car he was like all oh, really jolly and really happy but his eyes was kind of bulging and glazed and i didn't really think anything of it when i looked at his eyes but i just thought yeah, you know, he's a happy guy. We're going to have a good, interesting ride, blah, blah, blah. And he is going from South London all the way to part of North London. Anyway, he started talking about himself. I don't know how he got into this conversation topic. But he was saying how um, he came from a really good school and he's well off and he's got quite a large family as it goes and... He um, got into the dance scene, illegal underground rave parties kind of things. His friends all had sound systems because, and then he started to get into the, the drug game, just helping people, supplying people. But he said he always made sure he never got his hands dirty. Anyway, one thing led to another and he had a bit of a, uh, there was a situation the, the old bill was kept on trying to get him they couldn't get him and um, then he was in a car one time and there's a bit of a situation and somebody who was caught slipping and the old bill pulled, o- pulled him over and he was in a predicament where he had some small grams now I'm not up to speed on drugs i've never drunk i don't drink i don't smoke and i've never done any recreational drugs i don't even do synthetic jobs that the the pharmaceutical companies like to push to you so bear with me when i'm explaining this whole story but from that he is like fighting the court case fighting the court case and the judge didn't want him to send him to jail and he he openly said he said listen i'm a well brought up kid from the right kind of stock and family and I'm a posh kid basically he said Um, and the judge just kept on trying to find excuses not to send me to jail so we don't need to send him to jail he's not he's not built for jail was his exact words now (laughs) you could hear many privileged words and what have you screaming there but I it's just life I suppose it's just if you're loaded and you're connected they don't send you to jail or they don't want to but anyway he decided he's going to go to South Africa he went to South Africa and he got in the racing there then he obviously with the racing comes the drugs and he got into the drugs again or as he calls it he relapsed he went in a hostel not hostel rehab place and there's loads of famous people um, even famous people's children there. One person he said was Pierce Bronson's son was there and some other people that I don't really remember their names right now. Um, he didn't, I have to add, he didn't want to do this interview himself, even though he tells the story so well and so true to life. Um, obviously, it's his personal experience, but I just felt I had to share this, this with you. So he relapsed and he started to get really bad and he always says how he's kept on saying through the whole story i've got an addictive personality i don't do things by half if i do anything i do it really full and he said the drugs which was he called ice so i assume it's like ice to him is it like the breaking bad he's like he said yeah 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 it's that kind of drugs he said because of my addictive personality i need something to try and bring me down and and bring remove the confidence where other people want to get confidence. So he really, he knew his stuff. He knew his stuff. And he's a nice, likeable guy. But um, because he relapsed, he ended up back in England. 
he came back to England and then he went back out to Australia. So he went back to he went to Australia. He got on a rave scene there, as he does, and he's picking. And he also tried to change his life around and do um, picking crops and stuff in the fields. He explained there's a lot of Italians in Australia. I wasn't aware of that, but yeah, he he got into that and told some stories about picking crops and what it's like, oranges and all the prickly bushes and all of those things. But he ended up back um, relapsing again. And he had a girlfriend, and um, she got in, she was on 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 the on the ice as well, and um, so it wasn't really going well. Then he got himself in a scrape. So he said he used to get into quite a few fights and stuff because he just didn't care, and um, he got in a fight, and then ended up getting arrested. He got arrested. He got put in a, a Australian jail. He said the jail was really, really um, bad in the sense that it was kind of like one of those, a bit like those Arizona jails that you see when they're out in tents kind of thing, or you're just lying down in the hot sun and there's flies and all these things around. But because he had a cast on um, prior to being arrested, because he's, um, he he got in a fight before and someone damaged his arm, that's his wrist, he had a cast on there. So what he did, when the police had come to arrest him and he had drugs on them, he had some weed, he put the weeds in his cast. Now, when he, they didn't check the cast, they didn't open up the cast and check it or have you. So when he was in jail, he decided to tell somebody, and he said, he doesn't know why he said this, that I've got some weed, like, you know, we can smoke a bit later on or something. Next thing he knows, Two two guys are coming up to him in the yard. He's lying down. They're saying like, "Give us, give it over." Now he's also explained about how drugs, the ice and things like that, and crystal meth, they're very cheap because they're made in Australia. But weed and cocaine's really expensive and hard to get because you have to ship it all the way to that corner of the world, and um, it, it's just it, it's just a long journey. So the cost goes up. So that was very interesting and because you never really think about the drug trade, the price being influenced by the distance. You just think it's kind of the same all over, but what do I know? So anyway, these two guys are standing over him and like you can imagine he's lying down. It's really hot. There's flies buzzing around on him. He's in this wide off area. Now two guys are broken the sun, put a shadow over him and saying to him, give us your gear. So he turned to them and he said, if you weren't pricks, I'd have happily shared with you. But now you're not getting nothing. Anyway, before you know it, everybody in the yard find out he had this contraband, let's say. And a big fight kicked off. Everybody was fighting over about it. Obviously, lockdown came. <laughs> lockdown. And um, he was taken and put in solitary because he was the cause of it. In essence, they chopped his um, cast off and found the drug, so he's even in there for longer. Uh, finally, um, he got sent back home, as in deported back to England. Yeah, and they said he can never come back to Australia again. He did get into some other dramas as well while he was there. It wasn't just the one thing off. But um, I don't, you know, it's not my story and I didn't write it down. And I didn't want to record him because it was he didn't give me his permission to call it record him but he was happy enough for me to tell the story considering i wasn't going to name his names so anyway when he got back to england um he had relapsed and then he gone kind of got caught up with the wrong crowd per se and the old bill got him and they sent him to jail now this is a funny thing they said he said, all right, well, send me to jail near where he lives. It's a nice, soft, cushy jail. They said, no, that jail, he, he's got a term. And the term, I can't remember what the term was, but it's a term to say that jail's full, so you can't go there. You had to go jail up in Coventry. He went, what? I don't get that. That's a real hard man's jail. So he said, when he got there, it was terrible. He saw people being stabbed, 
all these manner of things. There's a hard man that used to run the prison and all and he used to have all the screws on bribes and all of this kind of situation. So um he he said he did he managed to be friends. Obviously his pu- nice personality. He managed to be friends with the main criminal or head jail man, um, or whatever you call it. You can clearly see I haven't gone to jail from my terminology here. But, um, yeah, he's managed to make friends. So everybody who wanted to harm him or cause him a problem had to leave him alone because he is good friends with the good guy, with the main guy. Um, finally, he obviously he got out and he's gone into sales and he works with his father. His father's had this established company for 35 years, has even won an award from the Queen for longevity and various other things. And um, he's just, he said he doesn't, he's not happy working with his father. Um, he said he loves what his, his, that his father has that ability and stuff, but he just wants more out of life. So he said his father always says to him, why you have all the personality out of his six children, his father says, you have all the personality that his father has as himself, but you just use it for the wrong things. You could be so much if you really wanted to, which obviously is inspiring hearing from your father and that. So at the end of the conversation, I said to him... I realised because I had I dropped him to North London and then he said I'm only going to be two minutes and he was really a quick two minutes he he went around the corner he didn't want me to see where he's going and then um, then he jumped back in the car and I took him back but then I realised he must be high or he must be on some things or he's going to get some some drugs or he's either dropping it off to this person he said no he's not a drug dealer but he ha- he's not dropping drugs but he has relapsed. So I take it that's what he was going to get some more ice or whatever and he didn't want me to see his dealer and he was, um, that's why his eyes were glazed and really big when he sat in the car and he's, but he's, based on what he's saying about his personality, he's a talkative, open guy anyway. But my last question I asked him before he got out, I said, I don't understand what is it that makes you want to do this? If you know you could be so much more, like your father said, what is it that you, why you need to do it? What is it that's missing for your life? How does it make you feel? And he turned around and said, well, that's actually a good question. He said, I'm just, with my addictive personality, I've started this, so I, I just go all into it. I need to find something to rechannel channel that energy on a a habit whether it's good or bad some other habit to allow me to do what I'm doing now I looked at this and I understood what he said there because I could say I have an addictive personality in the sense that when I do something I don't do it by halves I do it full and probably over the top it depended how you look at it excuse me but it was just a real interesting conversation and I really wish that he spoke his story on his own without me having to relay the story like this. But for obvious reasons, he wasn't overly comfortable talking on the mic, even if it is anonymous. He swore to God that people would be able to recognise his voice. And for you, if you are listening to this, I hope I've done the story justice. And um, to the listeners, I hope it's just an insight into some other somebody else's world, and you know how fast moving it can be, and all of those things. I was giving him my business ideas regarding his father's business because his father was a, like a facilitator who puts. If you've got a business idea, he can um, here find funding for you. In that respect, and he's been very good as it as as is pointed out at the start. But I was saying to him, what you want to do is if someone comes to 
you with a good business idea and you manage to persuade your father to help get them to fund it, then you weave yourself in as one of the directors to get a dividend. And he said, he was saying, that's not a bad idea. And I said, well, but he likes to do some stuff creatively. And I said to him, well, if you want to do it creatively, just fund the project as creative and become part of that project and free yourself into it. And that will help you stay off the, off the drugs. And he thought, yeah, that's, that's probably an answer. That sounds like a more than reasonable solution. And um, I don't know, I probably won't see him again. I never see my customers again. But I just thought I'd share that story. I hope this story hasn't bored you and it's actually in quite interesting. Um, feel free to like, subscribe and share. Don't forget our other sister podcast, Africa Investing Stories, which is which is here, um, which is twice a week, one with a solo cast and one with an interview. It is the start of season two, so you've got about 15 or 20 episodes for season one that you can catch up on. Um, I hope you like it, and thanks and peace out.